President of uh, Asian School of Development and Cross-Cultural Studies. And he will talk about a very serious issue, the opportunities of Korean-Filipino mission partnerships in the Philippines. Okay, let us welcome him. Okay. I am one of the privileged uh, Filipinos to come to Korea in 1977 uh, to study at ASEA Yonhap Sinapon, X. And as I was taking my Master of Theology, uh, I started to see the a change of Seoul, Korea, the capital city, from a very undeveloped country to become one of the best prosperous countries in Asia. And yet, it is not that Christianized. Unlike the Philippines, which is 95% Christian, in other words, even if we are successful in planting churches in every barangay, only there will be no change in the statistics. 95% of Filipinos are Christians, Catholics, Protestants, Evangelicals, Pentecostals, Charismatics. So it will be just a transfer from the Catholic Church to the Presbyterian Church or to a Methodist Church. Only 5%, which is 5 million Filipinos, are Muslims, and like me, Chinese, who would be Buddhist or Confucianists, and then maybe a few more who are members of cults. These are Christian cults. So whether it's Iglesia Ni Cristo, Jehovah's Witness, Mormons, they are considered Christians, like Munsung Myung. <laughs> in Korea is considered Christian. Now, I'm glad that I was raised as a fifth generation Christian. My father came from China and experienced the church multiplication in China just before the Second World War. He was discipled by Dr. Jan Sung. And I was raised that every week, two nights, we will have family devotions together. Tuesday night, Friday night. And he led one family after one family to Christ in our city, in Bacolod City, uh, us, not as a pastor, but as, as an elder, a office manager of an auto supply company in Bacolod. So that 70% of the newly baptized families, Chinese Buddhist families in Bacolod came to Christ because of my father. Why? He learned as a teenager, 17 years old or 18 years old, they can three by three go from village to village to introduce Jesus and his healing power and his demon casting power to ordinary Chinese who cannot read and who cannot write in the villages of China. Now, this is what is the Philippine missions movement trying to emphasize disciple-making movements. We have to produce every believer who is a disciple, who can lead devotions in the family, and can share to the other families who are not Christians to become followers of Jesus, and who can transform not just the relatives, but also their friends and their office, or in the case of the Chinese, also their business, to become Christ-centered, 
where the worship of Jesus is done 24-7. Every day and every hour. Daily, just like Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, whenever you eat or drink, whatever you do or say, do it to the glory of God. Now, Asia has been in my heart since 1977 because of my studies in Acts. Dr. Han Chul Ha taught us only one thing. Aseya Pokumwa. <laughs> Evangelization of Asia. And I came back to the Philippines with a heart for the Muslim world because I know the challenge of Islam for the Christian world for the Philippines is Islam. And if we have no strategy to reach Muslims in Afghanistan or Pakistan in the women who are in the villages of the Middle East, we cannot fulfill that vision. Asaya Pukumwa. And so I came back already with a fire to see to it that God sent me to Pakistan. And I started to learn Urdu. But then God shifted my attention to say the greatest mission force that God will use besides Korea, but will be Chinese China. And that's why in 1994, when I started to become full-time in missions mobilization in this country, I focused on helping the Chinese house churches produce two million tent-maker missionaries to evangelize the rest of Asia because the Chinese are the best missionaries if they know how to do it right. Take away their ethnocentric racist perspective of Chongguo, <laughs> Chongguo. <laughs> and be imperialist just like what they are doing today. But hopefully the Christians will be able to be the best missionaries in Asia. Now what can we as Koreans and Filipinos do to see to it that in the next five years Asia will be evangelized. And so my presentation, which you have in your uh, uh, folder, uh, is my simple understanding that we need to work together to do four things together. Using the best practices already that you have already as Korean missionaries here. Maybe you should have more consultations on learning the best models and best practices of Korean missions in the Philippines. In 1980, when Dr. Kim Hwa Leung came to start the Presbyterian Theological Seminary and the Presbyterian churches in this country, I was asked to be on the board but uh, I gave some conditions, and, and then uh, I, uh, they did not come back. But that's another story. Very important is how now uh, can we work together uh, to see to it that in the future uh, we can repeat, like what I saw in 2009 when I went to Marinduque. I saw a Korean missionary work with a Filipino pastor who finished only grade two. This pastor was uh, uh, leading a congregation of 40 members and with his partnership with this Korean missionary, he was able to not just set up a 200 member congregation, he had uh, the best elementary school in Boak, Marinduque, and the uh, children of the governor and the sons of the mayor 
were studying in this elementary school of this uh, uh, Vic Victory uh, Christian uh, Church there. But more important, they set up a cooperative, and this cooperative was shared with the whole community so that the church was introducing Christ to a very devoted, nominal, Christian, Catholic uh, city. Uh, actually, the whole province, Marinduque, is a very uh, Catholic uh, province uh, with Moriones Festival uh, uh, to honor uh, the cross of Jesus uh, in his crucifixion. But more important is also his assistant pastor uh, started an organic farm. And to make the long story short, this organic farm also became a model, not just for Marindoki, but for the whole of Bicol to be, gi be given an award by the Department of Agriculture of the government of the Philippines as a training center for organic farming in the entire Bicol. You know, so that uh, people can come and study. Almost like to go to Kanaan Farm and learn how to become better farmers to enrich the, the province. This kind of a wonderful story of a Korean missionary who can make that impact, I'm sure is repeated in many of your ministries. And I hope uh, you can learn from one another so that when you mix and work with Filipinos, you'll be able to uh, share with us uh, the best practices of Korean missions in this country. That's why the first one uh, that I have here is that hopefully uh, you can be part of a Philippine Missions Association and that together you can join the partnerships that uh, Pastor Nono already uh, mentioned, uh, uh, working with the Muslims, working with a rural poor, working with urban poor, working with the uh, Japinos in Davao, working with uh, the Indian medical uh, students who are now flooding the university medical uh, colleges uh, in this country. Um, and of course, the many uh, Chinese uh, mainland businessmen, more than 1.5 million of them uh, to work in the casinos in the Philippines and to set up their own businesses in Divisoria and in Baguio and in uh, Zamboanga and all over the Philippines. Uh, we need to work together so that you can learn from our strengths and our weaknesses just as we can learn from your strengths and weaknesses and together we can uh, have an impact on the 5 million non-Christians uh, uh, in this country. The next is to talk about uh, mobilizing the Filipino church. As you all know, when you came to the Philippines, the Philippines is the only major Christian country in Asia. We are the best supply of missionaries for Asia. Uh, and the God's blessing, at the same time, also punishment for the Philippines, is that we have kept the gospel for ourselves. We have not sent miss many missionaries to the rest of Asia. If Asia is going to hear the gospel, uh, it has to be primarily by Filipinos. And as a Chinese, I, uh, growing up in the Philippines, I'm very sad because when I go to, he uh, and to heaven and I look at hell, one-fourth of hell are Chinese. But Filipinos, when I go to heaven, there will be lots of Filipinos. Maybe uh, about 10% uh, of heaven is Filipino. <laughs> and so, uh, my desire is that Filipinos should be going to China, India, Saudi Arabia, uh, and Pakistan and Afghanistan to see to it that they become believers of Jesus. And so, uh, in partnership number two, 
is that we've got to learn together how to mobilize the whole Filipino church to, uh, to send out missionaries. And for our Philippine missions movement, we started uh, to set up OFW ministry desks. If we help our overseas Filipino workers see to it that their families will not be broken, we will serve them and help every local church that you plant and nurture and have a Filipino pastor. See to it that that pastor knows how to set up an OFW ministry in their church so that whoever works abroad, whether in Italy or in Germany or in UAE or in Egypt or in Jordan, this Filipino family can be used by God to plant Jesus and plant his church in those countries. And that's why, uh, uh, for me, uh, when I was the national director of PMA in uh, 2011 to 2014, my main emphasis is to see to it that every Filipino should be trained, how, especially those who become OFWs, should be trained in disciple-making movements. How can you contaminate others with your Jesus passion uh, so that others will also get to know Jesus? Uh, ordinary believers, uh, which I saw in my father, could lead one family after one family to Christ just by knowing how to do friendship evangelism. Uh, it's so easy to share about Jesus if you just know how to make friends and how to love people, how to love your neighbor. And, and that's just... Uh, a way that we hope every OFW uh, can do it. And I've seen it work. Even domestic helpers. Uh, I was in uh, Hong Kong giving a lecture on this, and a, a British missionary came to me and said, I saw this happening in Malaysia, because in Penang, there was a OFW, a domestic helper. God used her to lead her master uh, in, uh, in Penang, who is the richest banker in Penang, a Chinese Buddhist who became a believer, but not just a believer. Five years later, this businessman was the president of the full gospel businessman's association of the entire Malaysia. So one ordinary believer just sharing Jesus to the people you meet, planting God's love into those, their lives. Great things can happen. And I was lecturing also in Haggai Institute in ha Hawaii, and uh, one African uh, sat beside me, and he told me he came from Senegal, and he told me uh, he became a Christian. He went to Libya, as a Muslim medical student in Libya, Tripoli, during his medical studies, he came back to Senegal as a Christian medical doctor. Why? In Tripoli, in his medical school, there was a fellowship of Filipino nurses who shared Jesus with him. This is the kind of missions that we have today, from everywhere to everywhere, training every believer how to make disciples and plant Jesus uh, into people's lives. Now, the third point I have here is how to train people how to do this. And uh, many Christians, after five years or 10 years, they forget what they were doing in the first year of their Christian life. You are on fire for Jesus in the first year because somebody taught you how to share Jesus to, to your relatives and to your friends. But unfortunately, 
when they become active in the church, they become so busy in church worship, Sunday school, your fellowships, uh, Bible studies, that they no longer have non-Christian friends. They only have Christian friends in the church. That is the sad story that I saw in the many church mates that I had when I was growing up. My father was constantly winning new souls, new families for Jesus, but the others were just coming to church and uh, active in the choir, you know, worship, but not making impact uh, in the community. We need training, training of missionaries. And in my paper, uh, I originally uh, mentioned that many of you have MDivs and maybe a MA in, uh, in pastoral work, but maybe what we need is to learn very quickly uh, through perspective scores, we treat, treat them. And in PMA, we give Kairos uh, course for people, whether you are an expert missiologist with a PhD in missiology or just an ordinary church member, to have within one week a crash course on how to do effective mission work. Uh, and I hope we can repeat this in the Bible schools that you have and, uh, and whatever uh, churches that you have, training every believer how to have a macro, mega view of what uh, Christians can do uh, in order to make an impact uh, for Jesus. To multiply churches and multiply disciples uh, easily. And lastly, I would say, in number four, what I really was saying is that we all need to become experts in frontier missions, or when I talk to the churches, underground evangelism. We will be talking to Hindus, Buddhists, Muslims, and uh, people who are uh, folk religionists. And to multiply fast, we need to be experts, just like the Chinese church, uh, in China, and uh, many Muslim uh, movements uh, in the world today. 650 uh, disciple-making movements in the world today. About, about 50 million new believers among non-Christians are happening, mainly because people are experts in underground evangelism. How can you spread Decide, uh, the good news of Jesus uh, through multiplying disciples and multiplying churches, uh, house churches, really, uh, so that in every community, in every village, in every sector of society, every house is a church. Every office is a church because they have devotions together every week where Jesus is worshipped, where Jesus is honored. May God use our partnership when, uh, so that we can make an impact for Asia together. <laughs>